Hello, kids. It's Mr. Zero's Terror Ride. I'm Mr. Zero, clown, comic, and commentator on Haunted Houses. This is Mr. Chuckles, who's always with me. Thank you. I've got a melted bag of M&Ms that I got from my last night of working at Haunted House, and this should be my last video talking about working at Nightmare on 13th in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, so... I didn't really look into the last video I did. I know that I talked about doing Chainsaw. But Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of last week, I worked parking. Um, I can't think of anything that really is surprising. We had music most of the time. At least two of the nights we had music there. So that makes the night go by a lot faster and a lot more fun. Halloween night, I go in to work dressed up as Mr. Zero, pretty much. I'm wearing my usual undershirt, and I'm wearing that striped, red and gray striped shirt that, um, if you look at my happy birthday video that I did, um, that's the shirt that I was wearing. And then my, uh, Child's Play 2 shirt, because there's a clown on it. And, um, I've got the lip, my lips done, I've got my nose on, I've got my eyes done, and I'm wearing my hat. <laughs> And I'm doing hat tricks. I even took some juggling balls to work and juggled a little bit. Uh, you know, show people, hey, I'm not BSing around. I can clown around with the best of them. And uh, I show up to see what my part is, thinking I was going to work parking because I wanted to be a clown while parking. And no. Unfortunately, but fortunately, I was working chainsaw, which was fine. It was a good night for it. It's a very pleasant evening. It wouldn't have been too cold to do parking. But instead I did chainsaw. I gotta say, there's a lot of jerks out there. That's that's what was what was in my mind the whole night. Jerks. Jerky guys really. Um always taking their girlfriends, putting them in full Nelsons and facing me. I'm doing the routine, I wait till they get fully in the room, start it up, chase them out. Um and uh, some particular ones I can remember. I remember a group. I think it was like four guys. One girl who was dressed like maybe like a flapper girl. But she looked, she just looked like a tramp to me. But I guess that's not important. But she's with these four guys. And I'm waiting for them to come fully in the room. And I start up the chainsaw. I'm just in there holding it. I'm waiting for them to start running. And they start getting a little bit closer to the door. So I start chasing after them. Instead of them running like I'm expecting them to. Because they were acting like they were scared. They took the girl and threw her full on at me. They threw her. They pushed her, boom, at me. She was like kind of like halfway in the air coming at me really quickly as I was running in her exact direction. So the, I did what, you know, evasive maneuvers. Turn the saw away from her and kind of stop with my feet. And we almost had a collision, but we didn't. And from that point on, it's just like I turn the saw off, get out. You know, that was pretty much my reaction. Just go. Nothing I can do to scare them at that point. Other, that's just jerky behavior. She could have she could have gotten hurt. I could have gotten hurt. And because they thought it was funny. Ooh, go back to your fraternity and go um, date rape some more girls, huh? That's what I think of them. Um... I also had another group, two guys sit there and says, scare the girls, scare the girls, they'll come out. And so I don't really work on the two guys. I'm like expecting to get the girls, you know. If I could get a really good scare out of a girl, it makes my night. Well, if I can get a good scare out of anyone, it makes my night. But, you know, it's really easy to get girls scared of chainsaws. So I'm sitting there waiting. I, I know that they're in there because I can hear them. But this girl, she's dressed like a belly dancer. She comes out. She gets around the corner like I'm supposed to wait, and I turn on the chainsaw. She backs up in the corner. I do a couple swipes at her feet. I point at the door. She starts in for the door, and I chase her out. Turn off my chainsaw. Didn't think there was anyone else coming. All of a sudden, from around the corner, faster than I could turn my chainsaw on, around the corner comes this woman dressed like a slutty nun. And I can only remember that because she was wearing a nun's habit on her head, and she had fishnet stockings. Goes running out, screaming. I had I had a couple chuckles at that. Um, that's all I can really think of. Uh, it was a good night for chasing people out of the chainsaw room. Um, and it was a, it was 
It's a good way to spend Halloween. Although I did miss my family. And uh, next year, I'm going to see if I can try to swing it if I can get Halloween off. Though I probably won't be able to, but I'd like to. I'd like to still work at the, excuse me, haunted house. Got a hangnail. And then uh, we had bounce back for uh, November 4th and 5th. Uh, guess what I did both those days? Yeah, parking. And they were relatively busy, but, I mean, for s such terrible weather, it started raining pretty much when I got to work. And I was already late to work due to the fact that my uh, transmission went out. So my dad gave me a lift to work. And uh, worked parking. It rained, it snowed, it snowed, and it rained all night. And it was a friend. People on the road just drive crazy. So it was one of those nights. And then Friday, not snowy, but cold. Very cold. Um, I was, All night long I was humming, humming Christmas Christmas tunes. Because I'm now in a Christmas kind of spirit. I, I didn't have much of a Halloween spirit this year, but I, I feel Christmassy. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. <laughs> I'm sitting there whistling silver silver bells and sleigh ride and all those fun Christmas jingles as I'm working my job, but I, something really just got to me. This is some. It's gonna take a lot of the video that I'm gonna be talking about this. This got this group of people early early in the night. I'm trying to let this car make a left hand turn in, and this guy sits there and he says to me, as I'm saying, I tell them, I said, hold up. And they keep walking. I said, hold up. I'm letting a car in. And as this car is coming in, the guy says, it turns to me, but I'm a pedestrian. I have the right of way. Dumbass. And all I said to him was, dumbass to you, because I've got too much to do to think of a really good comeback. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, like, like, you know, fill it in if you want. But um, I said, no. I'm in my head. I'm thinking, no, you're not a pedestrian. You're up. And when a car runs over you, you'll be up who gets found to be in having the right-of-way. Because that's what the pro pedestrian right-of-way law is. It's just, if you get hit by a car, they have to pay. That's pretty much it. It's not going to protect you from getting hit by cars. Okay? If they don't see you, this guy, this doucher, was dressed completely in black, wearing little, little stupid earmuffs on, well, I'm a pedestrian. I have the right of way. I'm a pedestrian. I have the right of way. <laughs> pedestrian that. Dude, I'm out there every day wearing a Daglo orange vest with reflective stripes on it, holding a flashlight that I'm twirling in the air. And I get near misses all the time. People driving right up on me. What chance in your stupid little world do you have when you're like five foot six, wearing stupid earmuffs, and dressed all in black, going, dumbass, dumbass, dumb. What chance do you have against a two ton vehicle? Huh? And besides, it's just considerate to let cars in when they have an opportunity. I have been stuck on there trying to make a left hand turn into that venue. It's a very busy street. Sometimes you can wait two, three, maybe even five minutes just to make a left-hand turn into the business, you know? Longer. I've seen cars have to wait longer when it gets busy. It's just common courtesy, if I can get that person in, to just sit back and wait, okay? Is that so hard to ask for, a little common courtesy? And now, as far as rights go, this is this is George Carlin's, you know, the two rights you have. You have the right to anything you want to say, and I have the right to kill you for it. That's just my opinion, and I have a right to my opinion. Well, I have a right to my opinion, and my opinion is you have no opinion. <clears throat> and really, <laughs> after that, what do you care about rights, you know? Once I kill you, you don't care what happens to me, because you're going to be kind of dead. Your family say, well, what about our rights? Oh, well. It's not going to bring him back. Nothing you can do can bring that guy back. That's, 
That's my whole policy on rights. There are no rights. There's only privileges. The only reason why you're alive is because someone has decided to let you live. So try that one on for size. Politics in a nutshell. There's your rights up the river, up the creek. If you haven't noticed in this country, we don't have rights as long as we're not heads of corporation. That's all I've got. That's all I'm going to say. But now on to the rest of the night. So I get through the rest of the evening. I'm singing Christmas songs. I'm trying to have a good night despite jerks, which all night, jerks everywhere. Jerks everywhere, all night. I'm trying to have a good evening. And then it's time for the cast party. Um, they got pizza from a local uh, pizzeria called The Pie. Make excellent pizza. I had a piece of pizza that was, and it was cut into squares. I had a piece of pizza that was like like maybe two. This is the extra large DS. So probably, yeah, that big. And a crust up here. Big, huge chunk of crust. And I like crust, so that was it was all good for me. And they, they had ordered that in. Plenty of pies for everybody. And I had a huge... That, that piece was Hawaiian. And then as I'm walking past, I'm like, there's a little piece of cheese that I... Cheese pizza that I'll take, too. And that piece of cheese, like, like I had a good size chunk of like it was a triangular piece of pizza with a huge piece of crust on it and i had some i guess pepsi with it because they had some drinks out there i just grabbed a drink because it was so crowded went sat down and ate some pizza filled my tummy my belly good and then we all sat down in the theater and they commenced with the award giving out thing and you know these places they give awards to everybody you know, they give them a little certificate saying, basically, you worked here, here's your reward. And the first ones they gave out was the Better Late Than Never Awards, which um, are for people that came in the middle of the year. So there was about five of those. Glad I didn't get that reward. Award. Sorry, I keep saying reward, but it's award. Nope, they went down the list. Then they, they uh, Casey, the uh, casting director, since there any calls out, um, he says, now this guy here... He he's he he always cracks me up. He does, he works really hard here. Usually in parking, he freezes his butt off all the time. But I like to rub his head every day. I like to rub his head and then give him a hug and I call him my Buddha, or something like that. That's what he was saying on. And everyone is sitting there staring at me. And I'm like going, I'm like going, it's not me. You know, I'm like everybody's staring at me is what I said. But I'm thinking it's not me, because I've never given Casey a hug in my life. Not like that. I. Never have given him a hug. No excuse for it. But then he turns out it, it was Jamie, one of the uh, superiors in parking that caught it. And he's... So they all, like, turn around. Huh? Wasn't he? I know I resemble Buddha a lot. The laughing Buddha, I should say. You know? Laughing Buddha. I resemble, will resemble him a lot. I'm sorry. I like snacks. And I shave my head for haunted house season. But nope. My announcement was this guy, he's a clown. Yep, that's me. He likes to joke around with everybody, and everywhere he goes, he's always joking around. So I've got... Here, I'll block off my name here. I got the original jokester. Thanks for making us the number one haunted house in America, which it's been rated before. I don't know what it was rated this year. I didn't check it out. But it's been rated. It's, been, it's, it's highly recognized. And we've got... I've been to... Quite a few haunted houses. We've got really good actors, and that's one of the the reasons why we're such a good haunted house. Is we've got superb actors working there, really working their butts off to make sure that we have a good haunted house for people to come and enjoy. And yeah, that was it. We uh, they gave out the uh, the big time awards. Um, newcomer this year. Uh, her name's Sharky. She got the, uh, she got Best Actress. My man Miguel, he got um, Best Actor. And I, I was surprised he didn't take it last year. This guy goes into any room in the house, and he will come up with something really creative to do in that room. He just tears it up every every room. 
I'll, I'll, you know, last year I kept asking him, like, in rooms that I didn't enjoy or was having a hard time with, I would ask him what he does. And he, best ideas, best ideas for scaring people. And, uh, and he did, did, did really good, and he really earned that um, Best Actor Award. The Nightmare Master went to um, our photo Freddy Krueger. Aaron, he was he was best act or he was nightmare master and uh yeah, he earned it as far as I'm concerned. Um so yeah. Um I, this video's still going.